Managing Partner of Seed Fund, Mahesh Murthy, is here today to speak to you about the implications of an internet without free access and its backlash on entrepreneurs fighting to make their presence felt online. Now, in speaking with Mahesh backstage, I know he said that he wants this to be a really interactive session, so make sure you are, you've got your uh, questions to speak. I think we have mics going around um, in the crowd, so uh, with that, I will hand it over to Mahesh. Please join me in welcoming him on stage. Hi all, good evening, can you guys hear me? Hi, uh, my name is Mahesh Murthy. Uh, I don't have a slide presentation, so I hope uh, you guys can listen to me. Actually, I think I can walk down. It's much easier this way to have a conversation with you guys. Uh, <clears throat> it's the first time I'm actually talking publicly about uh, the stuff uh, Reseller Club wants me to talk about. So just uh, in terms of a brief history, uh, about six, eight months ago, or maybe eight, nine months ago, you probably heard that the TRAI had these regulations pertaining uh, to net neutrality. Uh, a lot of us had issues with what Airtel was doing and with what Facebook was doing. I'll explain those to you. We started a movement uh, with a bunch of others. We got 10 lakh, 11 lakh signatures. That's 1.1 million signatures. We sent them to TRAI. Uh, so that you know, movement briefly stopped the entire, entire anti-net neutrality thing from happening. But kind of the downside is the TRI has started again in a very confusing move. They've come up and said, we have yet another recommendation which ignores all their earlier recommendations. So I suspect some shady political game is going on where uh, somebody is lobbying somebody and I don't think we are the ones out there. So it's, uh, it's probably timely to talk about this. So let me, let me explain to you what what is this entire theoretical construct called net neutrality and why is it important? So let me talk about what Facebook wants and what Airtel wants. Uh, and let me talk about more basically, you guys are all businessmen, business people uh, and businesswomen. Why is this whole thing important to your future? So let's really start with a few interesting things about this world of business that we live in. We are all doing digital business of some sort. In the world that I grew up in, uh, traditional business, you know, 25, 30 years ago, uh, essentially it used to be believed that you spend more on marketing, you'll get more business, and that competition was going to keep increasing and so on and so forth, right? But something really interesting has happened uh, in the last five, seven, ten years, especially in the digital world. So if I take in the traditional world, you had automotive marketers, so you have Toyota and Volkswagen, each with a 20-21% market share, though with the recent pollution issues, Volkswagen will go down somewhat. And, you know, General Motors with a 19% market share, Ford with 17% market share. Or you take the world of pharma where, you know, Pfizer, Sanofi, etc. are all 7, 8, 9, 10% each. You would believe that, you know, among big companies in any big in industry, uh, these things tend to bunch up, all the number one, number two, number three, number four are close to each other. But something really interesting happens once you kind of move to the modern world. Even if I take Coke and Pepsi, which have been neck and neck, and I move that to the modern world, which is, uh, you know, somebody gave me a Red Bull, which is a world of energy drinks. Uh, the interesting thing is Red Bull has 47% market share globally. Coke and Pepsi, their energy drinks together have 11% market share. More interesting if I take women's apparel, and there are a couple of ladies in the audience. The world's biggest women's apparel brand is Zara, which is 10 times the size of Calvin Klein. Zara has $21 billion and Calvin Klein does $2 billion. When I take cars, instead of Toyota and Volkswagen like we talked about, if you move to more modern cars, like luxury electric cars, Tesla has 98% market share, and BMW i has 0.8% market share. Now let me move to the digital world. If I take search, Google has 90% market share. You know, Bing has number two and I don't even know who number three is. So you know, it's really interesting that if you take something like pharma or something like construction, you can name 10 pharma guys, companies in India and the CEO of each pharma company will probably be worth 500 crores or 1000 crores. But suddenly we take global large businesses like search and you don't even know who a number three is. 
you should know the number 10 of pharma in India. You don't know who the number three of search is. If I take uh, uh, mobile chat, there's WhatsApp, maybe 70 percent, WeChat at 17 percent, maybe Viber. You don't know number four, number five, number six. You don't know who they are. If I take uh, email, there's Gmail, kind of Hotmail, you know, Yahoo, and then it kind of filters out from there. If I take video, there's YouTube, then Daily Motion, and then I don't know who else, right? And and the list goes on and on. So really interestingly, the essential change that has happened in digital business is that now it's what I call the dominance of dominance. You have the ability to build an 80% market share, right? Or even in terrestrial business, Red Bull has a 47% market share. You have these commanding market shares that are possible now. That means the all of you entrepreneurs, when you grow up, you can be extraordinarily large. Now that's interesting, but now look at what makes this interesting. I grew up in the world where it was told to me that you had to spend more and market more to build brands. But let's look at each of these brands that we talked about. Tesla. Have you ever seen a Tesla ad? No. All right. Uh, Zara. Have you ever seen a Zara ad? No. Gmail. Have you ever seen a Gmail ad? Have you ever seen a Google ad? Have you ever seen a Facebook ad? Have you ever seen a WhatsApp ad? Have you ever seen an eBay ad? Every single market leader in the world today that has built a commanding, dominating market leadership spends nothing on advertising. So that's really incredible, right? It shows you that if you spend zero, you can become number one. Now, what's the secret to this? The secret to this is no slate of hand. It's the fact that we have this extraordinary network out here that you guys are all part of called the internet, which reaches 4.5 billion people around the world. In India, it reaches 350 million people. Why is that big? There are only 110 million TV sets in India. And even at 2.5 people per TV set, that's 260 million TV viewers. So the internet viewership is 25% larger than TV usership in India. The biggest mass medium in India by far is internet. TV is now increasing the niche medium. And for the youth who don't watch TV at all, it's a micro niche medium. So what's really important right now is that each of these businesses that we talked about, whether it's Zara, whether it's Red Bull, whether it's Tesla, or more terrestrial business, or, or more online business like a Google or a Gmail or a, a Google Maps or a, uh, uh, any of these things, WhatsApp or a, or, or a WeChat, or any of these businesses, every single one of them has grown by digital word of mouth. They've grown because somebody somewhere has used the internet to talk about these businesses, to chat with somebody, Think about it. You want to see a movie. Once upon a time, you read the Times of India. Now you say, oh, forget it here. Yeah. The Times of India is review based on how much money you give them. So what do you do? You go out there on Facebook and see, did your friends like the movie? You ask somebody else, do you love it? Did you hate it? Right? Every single credible source of information today comes on what we call the free internet. If you guys want to build your business, it is about figuring out what to do that is so unique that catches fire by word of mouth. For that catching fire of word of mouth to happen, you need to have an open free internet. Now guess what happens if Facebook has its way? And just while coming down here on the Western Express Highway, I saw this billboard saying, Reliance, now Facebook is free, no data. What this basically means is you can take a Reliance phone and you can get on Facebook and you can't get on anywhere else on the internet. What this means is that you guys have businesses, those people, who take that service from Reliance will never be able to see you. They can only see Facebook. They can never go to Google. They, will ne they can never let learn a video from Khan Academy. They can never search a fair on Expedia. They can never find a job on Nokri. They can never see anything on Wikipedia. All right? So net neutrality is this principle that we espouse and we've been fighting for it. It might sound airy-fairy and theoretical, but all it says is for you and me, and every one of those other 1.2 billion people in this country, I want the same internet. But it's not going to be the same internet if you take that Reliance product. Because you go out there, all you can see is Facebook. What, what does Airtel do? You go out there, all you can see is the sites that is, are paying Airtel. All you can see are, are the sites, if you're on the, on the Reliance uh, uh, and Facebook product, are the sites that Facebook has approved. Obviously, you'll not see a Google there. Obviously, you'll not see any, any non-Facebook product out there. Why are these guys doing it? And there's an interesting story behind this. 
As you guys know that there are about 1.5 billion customers each for Google and for Facebook. However, Google's revenues of these 1.5 billion customers is $70 billion. And Facebook's revenue is $12 billion. So Google has five and a half times the revenue for the same user as Facebook. So Facebook figured out that if it has to have its market cap grow, it has to get more users outside this 1.5 billion, and they can't go to Google. If they go to Google, Google gets five times the money that Facebook gets, because that's the nature of Google's business. So Facebook brought about this plan under the guise of philanthropy. You know, Mark Zuckerberg made a 45 billion, oh my God, charitable donation to make sure that the world is connected to Facebook. All right? But it's all about making sure you go to Facebook, but you don't go to Google, and you don't go anywhere else. Your money comes only to me. So my point is, so that's one. Airtel came in with its own angle, saying, oh, OK. All you guys want to be freely discovered on the internet. I mean, how many of you ever have actually, all the games that you use, whether it's Candy Crush or whatever, or whatever somebody told you. Somebody told you to get on WhatsApp. Imagine that you can't discover WhatsApp. A large part of your business's success is how you get discovered on the mobile phone, how you get discovered on the web browser. Imagine that you can't get discovered anymore. Because what Airtel's version is to say that if you want to even be seen, you've got to pay me. All right? So we as a group of guys, and I have no axe to grind out here. I'm a venture capital investor. I have a bunch of startups. So my small axe to grind is that my own 30, 40, 50 startups that I have money in should not have to pay a tax to Facebook and to Airtel to be seen by the people of India. I believe it is every unfettered right of anybody out there. I also think it's crazy that my maid, her child, should not be able to see Khan Academy videos, should not be able to go to Wikipedia, because Facebook says you can't go out there. You have to be in my network. All right. So we work pretty, pretty hard to be able to go out and take this esoteric point of having equal free internet for all and, and get it into the government. We work pretty hard for this. Uh, uh, an offshoot of this is we got 11 lakh signatures, which was unprecedented digital activism of its kind in India. And for a brief while, this entire thing stopped. And then again, we kind of sort of lost the momentum because I think Mr. Modi wanted to feel and uh, Zuckerberg gave him puppy jhappi in at the Facebook office, right? So again, the same nonsense has started again, right? So TRI has again gone back and re-notified, saying we're going to think about net neutrality again, right? So I don't know what else to say other than the fact that hamari ladai to jari rahegi. We have to keep fighting. It's one of those crazy things where I've been to Indonesia. It's crazy. You go to uh, I've traveled there on holiday to some remote parts, uh, Komodo and all that. There. People are on Facebook, but not on the internet. So you, you tell them, give me an email address. I don't have email address. Uh, how do I contact you? I'm on Facebook. Imagine that there are people who have no identity other than Facebook. They have no email address. Uh, you can't find them. You can't search for them. You can't find them on any search engine, whether Google, Bing, or anybody else. Right? There are such people around the world. And what's really happening is we are part of the lucky 1.5 billion that got equal inter internet access. I think the big problem is going to be the next 3 billion, next 4 billion, where there are these companies that are fighting to say, huh, I think I can snatch these. What's even more ironic is that in the US, Google is a big supporter of net neutrality. Facebook is a big supporter of net neutrality. But apparently, we're a third world country, right? In India, it's OK. We can screw Indians. We can't screw Americans. But we can screw Indians over. So both Google and Facebook are actually fighting net neutrality in India. Imagine that. Both of them want to own a part of the internet and a part of the users to themselves. I think it's a little crazy. It's colonial to me, saying, you know, something else for Americans and something else for Indians. I would imagine that I, you know, I'm not here to get donations or whatever. Uh, that is part of every single one of us. If you guys believe your customers deserve a free internet, you deserve a free internet, your customers deserve to be as big as they can be. Your, your, you know, your maids, your children, your drivers, your cousins in villages, your families deserve to have a free open internet where can, they can go anywhere allowed by law. By that I mean, yeah, it's okay. If the Indian government bans pornography, that's fine. But you can't have a private company determining whether you, where you can go on the internet at all. And why is this an even more important point? Right? Even here, I make a little bit of a distinguish, uh, you know, a little uh, point here. For a lot of people, a large majority of people, your internet access beyond the first 300 million in India is going to come on the mobile phone. If you're on the mobile phone, then you're on public airwaves. If you're on public airwaves, those airwaves belong to the citizens of India. 
those airways have to be licensed by the government of india to these companies right and my point is that if we the citizens of india own the airwaves on which these private these operators and these private companies are doing this stuff we absolutely have a right to say that if you are licensing my airwaves my friend you better offer an open free equal equal internet to all that was the point now if i put a wire to your house and i'm a private company arguably i can say i can show you only what i want even though actually even in this comcast tried this in the us and lost they said it's my wire i can do what i want and they actually had blocked netflix until netflix paid money and they lost in the supreme court so even that position is untenable but my entire point is that our future in india is going to be largely mobile and mobile airways everything around us belongs to the people of india we give the government of india right to auction them on our behalf maybe we should have a say in determining what our airwaves are used to for our own development i think it's crazy that our next mark zuckerberg and our next sundar pichai and our next whoever steve jobs if he grows up in a village in india where he does not have a neutral internet can never grow up because that person can never see videos never learn how technology works never learn how to code a web page all that person will know is how to poke their neighbor all right and how to send likes and how to be blocked by somebody right i think while that is nice and that is fine maybe we deserve a little more than knowing how to poke each other right so our entire point in this uh, in this campaign it's a crazy campaign because there's nobody with us uh, other than the people of india no single corporate supports this not one it's crazy right uh, all the big wigs and the fat cats are out there saying screw this we'll sit in delhi and we'll divide the internet between us facebook you take 100 million google you take 100 million hum apne hum dono ke beech mein hum baant denge india ko this is to me has like a pretty east india company is our job to stop this right so i just wanted to talk about the background of why one was doing that uh, we've been doing this uh, but i'm i'm not the biggest player out here there's a bunch of really committed people who run an organization called save the internet dot in uh, you have uh, nikhil pawa of media nama uh, <clears throat> you have a bunch of other really really smart guys who volunteer their time for it again we have the usual issues you know i i run a venture capital fund nikhil runs a publication the guy who does technology runs a separate technology company we are all straining at the seams because you know we we have no money from anywhere we are just simply doing it on our spare cycles which basically means after we work 16 hours a day we work another 3 hours a day doing this stuff right what i can all i can say is guys you know this it's not about any money see if you can come in join do what you can spread the message if you have anybody that you can talk to in delhi or your local mp or your local mla talk to them man and uh, this try petition is coming out last day for comments is the 30th of december again i think it's a i don't see why they had to do it they got this last year they got they got 11 lakh responses saying no and they said theek hai now we're coming back with the same thing again right there is nothing changed in the petition all we have to do is go back and outlast the big corporate big wigs on this one so uh, that's about it that's what i wanted to share i'm uh, happy to answer questions i hope this is interesting to all of you guys okay can i have uh, questions show of hands anything any questions i can answer talia thank you so much <laughs> anybody yeah There's, there are microphones all around the audience i'm happy to answer questions so just put your hands up uh, you're number one one second sir anybody who's the second number two there number three there who else okay we are number four there number one there number two is here number three is there number four is there sir yeah my name is sunil uh, Hi. my question was uh, what uh, you gave an uh, eloquent defense of uh, what whatever the situation is i wanted to know what is the comparable situation across the world say uh, not necessarily north america or developed uh, east asia or say uh, countries which are supposedly similar to india sure so the the situation in china is that both google and facebook have been blocked in china so they don't have access to 1.4 billion people so all of the first world is entirely net neutral the biggest part of the second world are china and india where between the two of us we have 35% of the world's population china is inaccessible india is vulnerable the reason why they going after india is if india falls they can quote india and take down indonesia they can take down uh, malaysia they can take down thailand they can take down every other third world country if we fall down all right already in tiny poor sub saharan african countries uh, tanzania and zambia and rwanda 
Internet.org is already out there. Internet.org is also called free, free basics by Facebook. It's the same thing. It's an evil plan to pretty much say, I will give you free net access. In return, you can only serve Facebook. That's what the entire plan is. All right? And what essentially does, Facebook gives the ca carrier money and says, Chalo, uh, we'll market this thing together. So essentially, Facebook is paying the carrier something to offset the, the carriage cost for them to use only Facebook. Right? So Facebook is in buying a captive audience using public airwaves. So in those countries, internet.org is there. All the papers I've read have said that the people there grow up more ignorant than their peers elsewhere. And you can imagine why. You have no access to any information really out there. All you can see is what's on Facebook. And that also what is on Facebook with people who are connected to you. You don't have access to the whole social graph. So that's what uh, this series is. India is, a big, is the big guy standing. They can't get into China. China will throw them out. We are the guys who are vulnerable. You know, our leaders want, you know, Mark Zuckerberg to kiss our ass and do whatever, right? That's why we are vulnerable. I'll come to you, sir. I hope. Sir. Hi, Mahesh. Hi. Hello. So, uh, you know, I completely agree with your stand on things, and uh, I have personally also tried to. Uh, so, a lot of our network has, you know, gone on the website, save the internet, when this whole thing with TRA happened earlier. So, this is something new which you're saying that these guys are actually coming back. They came back two days ago again. Wow. So, so as an end customer, as a businessman, and you know, what is it that we can do? So, are we saying that we go through this process of signing a petition or you know, creating this noise? Is there anything stronger? I wish there was. You know, I wish there was. The thing is, the Indian government is being very clear in not yet declaring it a law. So, you can't go through the government. You can't do a PIL because nothing is yet law. They're doing a consultation paper. The last consultation paper they did, we basically gang banged it and took it. Right. So the, one year later, they're doing it again, quietly. Right. Right. But this cannot become a law without a consultation of, of the mass public. So here's right? the interesting thing: TRA was supposed at the end of the paper was supposed to do mass consultation, but the end of receiving 1.1 million uh, emails refused to do mass consultation. Ah. And they said, okay, we'll come out with another paper one year later, hoping that up sab thande ho honge. Facebook has run a hundred crore campaign in print in India, right. saying. Somebody discovered a windmill using Facebook. Right, Bullshit. We saw the full page ads Nonsense. in the newspaper. Right? Yeah. Every single, I discovered a windmill using Facebook. My right. ass. Right? right. Nonsense. Right. 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 That's like saying, I'm Shah Rukh Khan, I drive a I-10. <laughs> right. Or I'm Salman Khan, I'm innocent. Whatever. Right? <laughs> Nonsense. So, <laughs> right. so, so Facebook, I, I believe, asked for time, said, hame ye crore ka campaign karne do. And now let's go back to India and soften it again. And you've all seen mails in Facebook saying, do you want to support a connected India? And everybody said yes, because Facebook has obviously not said that connected India means you're not connected to anybody else, only to each other, only on Facebook, right? So there's evil companies and there's some stupid guys like us, right? So the question still remains, how do we sort of ensure? Are, yeah. So I don't know, you know, the tools at my disposal are what? I have some social reach, I tweet, I Facebook, I, link, I go on LinkedIn. I can probably reach two, three hundred thousand people. You guys can probably reach many more than that, right? All I can do is write, uh, request you guys to do something if you care. I don't know what else to do. And right now, if it's a process where uh, you know you need to get answers, let's go back and again take TRA again, or write to Prime Minister, write to Modi. Whatever it is, I don't know. Maybe you guys can have better ideas than us. We are very unidimensional, right? Sure. If I was a Shiv Sena and had Gundas at my disposal, I'd think of a different solution. <laughs> I'm not that. So I don't know the answer. I mean, I have no answer to the question. So, yeah, so. I'm happy. I'm maheshmurthy at gmail.com. Just write to me if there's any guys, anything right. you guys can come up with. Or tweet me. I'm at, at maheshmurthy. Yeah? Done. Thanks. Sir. Hi, Mahesh. Hi. I'm Pinkesh Kotecha. Uh, Mahesh, I have a small question. Uh, like, uh, the entire noise went around <laughs> while uh, Facebook was offering a free internet and, uh, yes, a couple of pro providers. Actually, it was never a free internet. It was just a free Facebook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Th that was a free <laughs> Facebook. But there has been uh, like a couple of CDNs, like Akamai is there, Google has been there. They have been peering with the network providers and prioritizing their own traffic. Somehow that also goes against the net neutrality fundamentals. It's a good one. So here now, yeah, go uh, on. yeah. So so one more thing with uh, TRAI giving consultations on on uh, yes how net neutrality should be. There's another arm, um, uh, probably Nixie, who says that yes we would want to. Uh, have appearing being available at each and every Nixie nodes. So, yes, in a way that's an internet penetration. In a way you are prioritizing the Google or so, Akamai or LimeWire traffic. 
thereby once again you're killing the basic instinct of so, net neutrality. I, so here's what I think. You know, I, I, I make a differentiation. I, I go from the point of view of the consumer. I actually believe it is necessary to manage a network. I don't think a network is less if you say, do Right? I think it's important to actively manage a network. In you know, times of emergency, maybe you want to let SMS through. In some other times, maybe you need to let video through. In some other times, you need to let something through. But what I don't want is that you can't access some part of the internet at all. So while it's something to say that I can speed up or whatever traffic, again, on a, more on management basis than on paid basis. Right? I don't necessarily believe that, you sh that uh, like Comcast got Netflix to pay for prioritizing its traffic. Or and non deprioritizing this traffic or even allowing this traffic it yes. wasn't even prioritized yes, because when you it, talk it was about stopped from being blocked priority, you, yeah. you stopped it was unblocked blocking. as opposed yeah. to pushed forward right so i actually believe it's a fine position where some amount of network management is needed passive or active right i actually believe it should be done for the better of the network as opposed to for commercial reasons but you do it for commercial reasons it's going to be crazy you're going to have a crap site which is pushed more than a good site and it should be from a consumer's point of view if consumers are pulling site x more than site Y, I should be allowed to prioritize site X for them based on pull rather than push. So my point is a, is a more subtle nuanced point, saying that I think it's okay to manage networks, as long as you're not doing it for commercial reasons, as long as you're doing it based on consumer demand. But I think you should not ever do something which stops people from accessing entire parts. 99.99999% of the internet is not accessible to a Facebook free, uh, you know, internet.org user. And that, that kills the essence. Yeah? Thanks. Cool. There was a, number four was, so you, was it you, sir? Yeah. I'll come to you. You're number five? Yeah. Okay, let, let me, before you. Five. Next questions? Yeah. Six? Yeah. Seven? Eight? Nine? I mean, yeah, great. So, we, we are, uh, since uh, many years, we are seeing a telecommunication which is excelling the world. Telecommunication with censoring? Which is uh, ruling the world, exactly. That's right. See, we are seeing the society which is most connected. Right. Huh? So, in India, there are um, is this possible? I think it is. You know, I, I think a very simple thing is we've always said roti kapda makan. What's wrong with saying roti kapda makan bandwidth? Roti kapda makan bandwidth so, is right. I, I was a brief advice. I mean, I advised for a brief while uh, uh, Arvind Kejriwal's government in Delhi, and my suggestion was simple: give everybody one gig a month free. Fine. Let include the that in the it, yeah. include then in monthly plan. Well, I mean, whatever. Let the government say. You know. You want to do this on my airwaves, you give everybody one gig a month at some low, reasonably low bit rate, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. And above that, if you want something, and you know, you can charge above that. I think a good government should do that. If you want our children and our children's children to become the future Zuckerbergs, you must give them open, free, fast net access. If not open, free, fast, at least open and free. Fast, I can pay a little more for, but let me allow, I me mean, just allow me access. I think we can do that. We have the ability to do that. It's not expensive. I mean, the cost of bandwidth is at an all-time low. There's nothing wrong. I mean, if we can provision rice and we can provision education, I mean, rather than spending 50,000 crores necessary on education, I can say, you know, here's 10,000 crores, give everybody bandwidth and let them access Khan Academy from around the world. Why do we have to reinvent Khan Academy for India? So, shall we, shall we drive in that direction only instead of going on negative but, points? So, here's the thing, right? You know, there are so many powers that talk to the government. Nobody has opened it up saying, you know what, why are we fighting this battle? Let's just give everybody access. For me, the point is give everybody access, the world will find a way. Uh, somebody else says, no, 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 we have to create our own curriculum. My point is, there's enough of curriculum out there. Just allow people access, right? Bring the cost of bandwidth down. Then there's the other argument. Telco say, no, we have so much money, you have bid us. Now, please allow me to gouge the customer and exploit the customer. That's the Telco's argument. So I always go up there with the COAI guy who's out there in a the suit boot saying, no, no, we have spent a lot of money. So I said, my entire argument, you have to pay money, I have to pay for a little bit. You have to pay for a little bit. So that don't, you don't have the right to screw me over just because you spent money. But it's a lobbying battle. I think out there the government is not yet sure. It has not heard the voices of all of you. If you guys can put a voice to it, if you have an opinion to it, that would be awesome. Yeah. Number five, sir? Yes. Hi. Uh, hi. Uh, my question was that uh, do you feel this issue of net neutrality is a little overhyped? The reason being um, we haven't asked for telecom neutrality or neutrality in retail. For example, if you go to a chain of uh, stores owned by some ex company, they will obviously push their juices, their wafers and things like that. So um, why haven't we uh, you know, asked for neutrality in those sectors sure. as well? 
I, I think I can answer the question. It's a very simple thing, right? I, when I go to store A, and that store A is a private store, owned on its own land, and I go there and say, okay, tumhara big bazaar ka hi noodles hai isme, ya you know whatever Patanjali noodles hai, mujhe Maggi chahiye or vice versa, whatever Correct. your preferences are, right? Correct. I am not stopped from going and buying the other noodles elsewhere. I have freedom. The second thing is my infrastructure, government infrastructure was not used to deliver those needle, noodles. You use a private truck, you bought it, tumhe apna brand bechna, tum becho. Like you run one web, web, web reseller, you're a web site reseller, he's a website reseller. I don't expect you to sell his product. I don't expect him to sell your product. Because you have a right to sell your product as long as you don't stop me from buying his product. So don't you think the market forces of demand and supply will cancel out uh, this Baba, it's not monopoly and it will won't, uh, ultimately if, if, make everything new? If the government comes in, seriously, and you find these billboards saying free Facebook, data plan ki zarurat nahi hai, and you find them in 50,000 villages next year, what's, what do you think is going to happen? You're, look, you're going to lose customers. Those guys will never host a website because they're on Facebook. They'll never discover your product. They'll never buy your product. They'll never use your product. They'll never learn anything. And they are, they are your children, your nephews, your nieces, and your next generation. All right, this is a national initiative. I'm saying, at this point, it's almost a national initiative saying there is roti, kapada, makan. I mean, that is a fundamental right in, to, in addition to education. We should give a fundamental right to internet access. Yes, but even as far as education is concerned, uh, you send your child to a particular school. Right. He learns a particular syllabus, particular curriculum, just as you said out there. Sure. So, where's the neutrality in that case as well? But this, there's no comparison, right? There are enough schools. I can send my child to a madrasa, right. he can learn something. I can send my, send my child to a Catholic convent, right. he can learn something. But I'm not forced to only choose a madrasa without another choice. I'm not forced to only choose, uh, you know, an Aryavidya Mandir without any other choice. I always have the benefit of choice. But when you have net non-neutrality, you have no choice. On your phone, you only get Facebook, you can't get anything else. But at that point of time, you will have competitors who come into the market which will compete with uh, like who, Facebook yeah? and the others. But, but you can't, but definition, if you get free internet on Reliance via Facebook, it's gone, right? So only another carrier that you don't have a second SIM for will offer maybe uh, Airtel free internet, which is called Airtel Zero. All of these are zero rating products. So it's very different, right? Because if I, if I take it from you, I, can't, I don't have any other choice. You're, you're killing my choice. Think about it. Would you like your child to grow up? You always have a choice to send, send your ch child to any school or not to a school at all. You always have a choice to go to any supermarket or not go to a supermarket at all. But once you get into one of these, you have no choice. And not just that, this is on government property, which we own. All cell phone services on government property. School is not on government property. It's on private property. Yeah? Okay. Subtle point. Uh, number six was there. Sir. I'll come to you, ma'am. You're number seven. We are out of time? Okay, we just finished this uh, lady with the last one. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Hi, Mahesh. I'm a big fan of yours. I keep following you on Facebook and LinkedIn. <laughs> yeah, so my question is like, you know, when the Save the Internet or uh, .in campaign was going on, after some time, you know, Facebook started its own campaign. And then it rebranded its own internet into free basic internet services. And then every day when I used to log on to Facebook, it used to show me an ad on the top saying, do you support free internet? Then it got changed into, do you want free internet? And then it was something very vague, which, which made us think that, you know, this is good for the country, this is good for India, so I should support it. My question is, uh, does Facebook plan to use the number of votes that they are getting and if yes isn't this bad for us and how can we stop this uh, yes they do because they've gone to government and saying oh they got only 1.1 million votes we got 14 million votes of exactly. people clicking on Facebook saying yeah we want free internet yeah without ever saying it was never free internet it was only free Facebook right at the same time the callers you got calls on the phone saying yeah. free internet ki aap sehmati mein hai to ek dabaiye right. yeah, whatever aap sehmati nahi hai to ek dabaiye your vote was counted. I agree. They are doing every damn thing. Look, come on. We have three times the population of the US. We are the last large open country in the world. They want to colonize it. China won't let them. They are too smart. 
we our our leaders seem to want to go and you know kiss their ass in in santa clara our mountain view right ah yeah. maine zuka zaka bag ne mera haath milaya we don't know we are doing things for personal glory yeah. somebody somewhere should take a stance and stop right it's our future at stake yeah right so uh, so my point is that well facebook puts a misleading ad on its own page what are you going to do exactly nothing right all we can do is inform you uh, ironically using facebook itself not to click that <laughs> yeah true true but the the point which i was trying to say is that you know well, uh, even like, for example after modi strip you know the uh, facebook releases this entire thing with red uh, with orange green and white yeah, yeah. it said some connected india some nonsense it was a vote for internet.org right and right. all of you said are modi ji na bol diye hum bhi karenge hmm. and everything was counted as a vote for internet.org when you change your dp yeah to yeah. that green orange white thing yeah. it used internet.org code right right so theek hai there are wo chalu log hai yaar all we got to do is just you know is be very again i don't know if we'll win the battle we may lose the battle so i thought we'd won it a year ago the buggers have come back again after spending 100 crores on advertising and much more in you know taking and hosting them at their campuses in mountain you think kya dekho hamara canteen hai free mein khana dete hain hame aap india free mein hame de dijiye bech dijiye india aur hum maan gaye right so i just hope that somebody out there has some ability to stop this okay all right thank you hi mahesh good evening and i just want to know that since you've said that two days ago they've started this entire nonsense all over again why don't we start a campaign with the, you know creating an awareness right from beginning from now rather than wait until the government really says yes we are going to do it if we start uh, you know uh, content and articles and different kinds of uh, you know uh, yeah i'd love to if the, we can the, use, using a facebook so the key thing course. what we figured is they have the power to exhaust us because they so, have a huge amount of money we have no money right we need hence all we can do is aim our stuff towards the last 3 days before the voting closes because no matter what you do 80% of the votes will go in the last 24 hours won't it help if you start creating yes, articles and awareness just I, articles i, I completely not? agree with you what's your name ma'am rani i agree with you right yeah but we don't have a staff we have nothing we have no office we are no, just a bunch of volunteers you start through. a campaign will support you because there are many sure. people who would come yeah, because we, uh, we i absolutely will and uh, yeah so come to save the internet dot in follow me on uh, i am at mahesh murthy or follow nikhil pawa at nixxin and we'll figure out what we can do we have um, we'll say, try karenge aur kya karenge yes thank you thanks uh, mahesh mahesh yeah the website is save the internet dot in save the internet dot in mahesh uh, uh, oh, oh, she wants I'm me being told picture that. wants me off stage <laughs> just just a second yeah. uh, so last year i had signed this petition and again yesterday just i got the same mail saying that there's some bullshit uh, yeah. a change in the wordings i mean there's uh, those supported change.org pe there's a guy called sandeep pillai he has been running it all over the year okay so you just go there and probably you can sign stuff plus aib had also run this uh, campaign yeah. towards the end that you yeah. go on the government so site aib is good guys we asked them and they do stuff But exactly now those guys are really busy making lots of money selling stuff to hotstar and all that nahi theek hai then sab log paise hum sab paisa banane mein lag gaye yaar paise bhi banate hain wo bhi karte hain wo bhi khana khana chahiye na so this is one thing i want to tell everyone those who want to like take action and like yeah. the way you asked uh, apart from that one second over i'm so Just sorry <laughs> Come on, this I is good social stuff. You guys can hold on for five we, minutes. We need to do really this. Really bad at money making ideas okay. soon. First, let's All save right, the country. Give me two minutes. Yeah. Because there's no point for the dot .org if we won't be able to do this today. That's a good Absolutely. point. Absolutely. Right. So uh, this is just the thing that I want to tell. Apart from that, when you go on Twitter, just uh, search for the hashtag net neutrality. See whoever is writing anything about it, tweeting about it on Facebook. Just retweet it. As of now, I don't know what else to do. I'll try to write more content regarding this, and I, I think if we get enough of us together, get another million voices, get all the journalists you know to write about it, do what you can. Somebody somewhere in Delhi will wake up. At least so I can hope. Thanks all. Uh, if Mahesh. you share, means we have to get off. Thank you very much, organizers. Thanks. Thanks so much. Thank you so much, Mahesh. I think the main takeaway here is each and every person here. If we start tweeting, we start writing, then we actually make our presence count and make sure that the internet stays free for us and we have access. Ladies.